you might at least have put on a black armband or a black tie. Your family has no respect for the dead. Well, most of them are dead. <laughs> well, that's how it starts, with no respect for themselves. <laughs> Your brother, drunk at the crematorium. <laughs> Trundling off down the rollers after the coffin, if you please. I thought he cheered everyone up. If I'd known it was going to be a fiasco, I wouldn't have dyed my brown shoes black. <laughs> Any more bacon? Bacon? You're asking for bacon. Uncle Bastable's ashes are on the table. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't Jewish, was he? He was an archdeacon. Ooh, put him on the sideboard. <laughs> you leave him there. He's more right to be here than you have. He, uh, he wouldn't mind if I had another piece of toast, would he? Not listening. Need a bit of ballast. Sponsored bell ringing today. Going for a Bob Major. All proceeds to the deaf. Very fitting. Church bells. I sometimes wish I was deaf. I sometimes wish you were deaf. I didn't hear that. Oh, that's a start. Mother, mother, where are you? Oh. Can you hear me, Mother? Would you slap Father once for yes, twice for no? We're not at home to Master Cheeky. Oh, oh here you are. Good gracious me. Breakfast in the living room? What is it, Constant Spry's birthday or has the cat been sick in the bread bin? <laughs> Timothy. Yes? You are in the presence of the dead. Father, I thought he looked better than usual. <laughs> Your great uncle Bastable. In powdered form. He came in the post. <laughs> Addressed to me, first class. He must have done it on his travel card. Cheap. What? Cheap. Is there a canary loose in this room? <laughs> oh, very Bob Monkhouse. <laughs> this is a sad occasion. Hardly sad, Mother. Uncle Bastable was 98. Yes, and now he's been taken. Well, hardly taken. More of a free offer in the end. <laughs> Not quite. 48p to pay. I wonder why he addressed himself to me. Well, he was always very kind to you. You got a five shilling postal order every Christmas, wet or fine. <laughs> yes, do you remember? Do you remember when I was seven? Do you remember that girl Jezebel Hinks? Is this relevant or is it going to be smutty? Well, <laughs> both, really. Oh, good. Fire away. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Jezebel and I got rather inflamed while practicing for Postman's Knock. No smutty stories, please. This is Earl Grey tea. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mother. Anyway, Jezebel Hinks and I, you see, were behind the Wendy house. Knickers akimbo, as it were. <laughs> Who should happen upon us but Uncle Bastable? I hope you had on clean underwear. <laughs> so, uh, what did Bastable do? Well, nothing. You see, he didn't say anything. He didn't tell anybody. He didn't make us feel guilty. He said there was nothing wrong with being inquisitive. Curiosity killed the cat. No, it didn't. It was the ice cream van. <laughs> Anyway, Uncle Barsby used to say, without curiosity, we'd still be in the Stone Age. He ought to have punished you. Too saintly for his own good, he was. You scatter him somewhere select. Well, put him on the asparagus. Better than hoof and horn any day. <laughs> I'm not having a member of my family being manure for you. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Here we are. Redisposal of ashes. Please refer to letter in secret drawer. Key hidden where anyone can hear it. God bless B. He wasn't quite all there at the end. <laughs> Doesn't it intrigue you, Mother? I mean, aren't you curious? Secret drawer, you know. In what? Key to what? You know, I mean, it's better than Enid Blyton. I kept your Enid Blyton for your children. Oh, your children? Where are they, I'd like to know? Well, I'm available. Where's Jezebel Hinks? <laughs> Jezebel Hinks divorced her third husband. She's had 19 grandchildren while you've been filling your fountain pen. <laughs> she works behind the meat counter. Would you mind telling her I'm still behind the Wendy house? <laughs> and this time the archdeacon is in no position to interrupt. Where are you taking those? I'm not leaving them here, Mother. People will be very slapdash about this sort of thing. Frank's Auntie Doris wanted her ashes scattered in the Himalayas. She ended up on the pavement outside the Star of India. <laughs> 
when he goes, I'm going to sprinkle him on the asparagus. You don't like asparagus. Precisely. <laughs> You were sitting there that's doing it. I'm in the way. No, 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 no. no. <coughs> Just the proximity. The warmth. Sort of scent. <laughs> the thigh pressure, really. <laughs> no, 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 there's nothing wrong. No, 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 no I like it uh, just as it is, all right. Yeah. Right from the top. Yes, right from the top, right down to the knee. <laughs> I mean the piece. Oh, play it from the top. Oh, sorry. Da capo. Sorry. <laughs> would you like to come to tea today? I'm sorry? Uh, <coughs> would you like to come to tea today, you know, just a sort of normal middle-class tea, four o'clock in the afternoon? Don't have to if you don't want to. I'm packing. Oh, packing? I told you, I'm going back to my aunt's in Oakhampton. Oh. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> No, it won't. It'll be ghastly. Oh. I'll come to tea. Oh, all right. Oh, I don't know if I can be there. Um, oh, yes. 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 That would, that would be lo lovely. It won't be terribly exciting. It'll probably be this morning's Earl Grey tea bag revisited. <laughs> I'll give Mother a long letter to post. By the time she's read it, we can have a quick cup. <laughs> Why haven't you asked me before? Well, I wanted to get, you know, to book two first. <laughs> Make progress before making progress. But I'm going away. I know, well, I, you know, I'd forgotten. Oh. <laughs> da capo, from the top. <laughs> oh, um, well, it, it's gone half past. Oh, sorry, <laughs> taking up your time. Well, I, I'll work on that first bit mm. and get it all. <laughs> I'll take Uncle Bastable, if I may. <laughs> oh, I meant to ask you um, about that. We had this note um, with Uncle Bastable saying, mm -hmm. key hidden where anyone can hear it. Now, do you suppose that might be a musical key? You know, the... That... <coughs> oh. Sorry, but it's gone half past. Come in, Janet. Oh. Wait a minute. I know you. It's... It's Janet Allboys, the singer. Janet Allboys. Goodness me! Uh, I heard you singing once in the Delaware Pavilion, Bex Hill, and Janet Allboys... <laughs> My Uncle Barstable was a great fan of yours. This is him, by the way. <laughs> I remember you used to hit this very high note and shatter the wine glass. Oh, my party trick. I don't think I can do that anymore. Oh, I'm sure you could. Oh, it was absolutely wonderful. Really <coughs> thrilling, you know. I remember you hit this very, very high note, shattered Father's light ale glass. Went all over Mother. She hit him. He hit me. I rushed home and kicked the cat. It was wonderful. <laughs> oh, we had a lovely time. Sorry, I'm taking up your lesson time. <laughs> well, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, oh. Right. Oh. Oh, sorry. I fell over the tea trolley. <laughs> you, Timothy? No, it's the Bernard Manning fan club. <laughs> Have you wiped your feet? One of us has, the other one hasn't. <laughs> I'm up here. In heaven. <laughs> Already, where were no formalities? I want you to come up here and shut out the noise of those dreadful bells. They're ringing in this direction on purpose. And your father keeps missing his turn. He knows it annoys me. Timothy. What are you doing, Mother? Learning to play the hot water bottle? <laughs> or are you planning to fly south for the winter? No! <laughs> Sit down, yes. Timothy. Yes, Mummy kids, yes. Now, have you ever thought about going into the church? <laughs> what, out of the rain, you mean, or something? <laughs> 
No, I mean taking orders. Oh, sorry. Sorry, being a waiter. <laughs> Holy orders, becoming a parson. But I can't become a parson, Mother. I'm 43. I'm a librarian. Well, you speak nicely. Well, so does Basil Brush. <laughs> I couldn't become a vicar, Mother. I mean, I have wicked thoughts. No, you don't. I do. I had one today during my piano lesson. <laughs> Two, as a matter of fact. Anyway, don't you, it wouldn't work, Mother. Don't you remember last Christmas when I tried to read the lesson? I couldn't see over the pulpit. <laughs> I could stand on a brick. I can't spend my life standing on a brick, Mother. Anyway, I haven't had the call. I'm calling you. <laughs> and we know there's a vacancy. Your Uncle Bastable. Oh, what a life he led. He moved in society. He was confessor to the Dagenham Girl Pipers. <laughs> Plenty of overtime there, I should think. <laughs> Try not to be glib. Women with titles flocked to his sermons, and for 98 years, your great uncle practiced celibacy. Practice? Couldn't he get it right? <laughs> I wish I'd stayed celibate. You were a mistake. Well, it wasn't my mistake, was I? No, and it wasn't mine either. It was Herman Goering's. Herman Goering? What's he got to do with it? It was one of his bombs. <laughs> it made the whole place vibrate. <laughs> it must have been the vibrations started your father off. <laughs> there he was, waiting in the Morrison shelter with his eyes like hot coals. <laughs> Father? This was before he had his tonsils out. <laughs> well, what did you do, Mother? I shut my eyes and thought of Frinton. <laughs> Frinton? I'll try that. Oh, I'll never forgive Herman Goring. The only person who gave me any sympathy was Uncle Bastable. He patted my knee and said, there, there. <laughs> he never forgot my birthday. He sent me that hideous blue vase last year, <laughs> even though he was totally off his head. <laughs> there, there. Billy! It's the monster from the Morrison shelter. Hide in the wardrobe, Mother. Come on. Don't you speak about your father like that. At least he's made me happy, which is more than you have. What? Refusing to be a vicar. You look so nice in gaiters. I look good in Toad of Toad Hall, Mother, but I don't want to be a weasel. Language, <laughs> Timothy! Cheeky little boy. I'll cut off your viral. <laughs> See what's arrived for you. I thought you were bell ringing, Father. No, I've been stood down. My clapper was red hot. <laughs> what's this? It's, it's for me. Yeah, there were two chaps at the doorstep waiting with me when I came in. It's from Bastopor. The secret drawer. This will have the secret drawer in well, it. Yes, usually. Uh, if you put your hand in, you can find a catch. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here we are. Feel something. It's rough and it's moving. It's my finger, you beer. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now we know we know it has a key because it's locked. So where is the keyhole? Then we might. We... Mother's right. You have good eyes like hot coals. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the Morrison shelter. Uh, the Morrison. Oh, oh, oh. The games we used to play on top of that. <laughs> on top? Was it safe? Ping pong, blue football. <laughs> We're talking about underneath the Morrison shelter. During the air raids. Oh, no, no, we tried to avoid that. Your mother wouldn't leave me alone. I was saved by the all clear many a night. What? Sydney, get that hat off. Mm, told you, insatiable. <laughs> What's this rubbish? It's from Uncle Bastable. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'll have it in my room. It's for me, mother. Then get it outside. You're putting on your best suit, and you and I are going to dispose of those ash things. I can't, Mother. We haven't solved the riddle. And Miss Clanger's coming to tea anyway. Who? Mi my piano teacher. Clanger? That rings a bell. In a maid like that, you'll be desperate to get married. I'm not having you in there on the sofa with some pianist woman who's all fingers. I was hoping we might have an air raid. <laughs> oh, damn. What, what, what was that for? It's your fault he's here in the first place. Psst. Psst. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's me. Hello. Look, there's a bit of a... Hello, sorry. <laughs> Look, there's a bit of a problem in the household. So I thought we'd be original and have tea in the gazebo. Ooh. The shed. <laughs> 
around, always does. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, if you wouldn't mind going back down the avenue uh, to Chelsea Close, there's a little twit and runs off to the left through what used to be Badger's Cops. You know what I mean? You'll recognize it. There's a pile of mattresses there. <laughs> when you turn left at the Scout's Hut, go down the path, and you'll see our garden fence right at the end. If you climb over there, I should be hiding there in the wallflowers. <laughs> quite big this year, actually. <laughs> so, see you there in. 20 minutes or so? Okay. Over and out. <laughs> Voila. The Belvedereette. <laughs> the mini logia. The smallest room. <laughs> well, not the smallest room, but you know what I mean. <laughs> there we are. Now, why don't you uh, make yourself comfortable? Pull up a bale of peat. <laughs> You've got a desk in here. Yes, yes. This is where I, uh, I do most of my writing. <laughs> my cabin in the woods. Yeah. Now, I've got some rather nice little biscuits here, sort of petty fool. Oh, sorry, they're slug pellets. There we are. It's cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is. Cool for cats. Funky. <laughs> no, I mean, it's cold. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, I'll get some heat. I'll bring in some compost in a minute. <laughs> ah, that's what I usually do, you know, when I'm entertaining. I entertain quite a lot, actually. <laughs> bit of a gay dog. <laughs> well, not gay, you know what I mean? <laughs> bit of a dog. Well, not a bit. But anyway. <laughs> not the nasty bit, anyway. <laughs> I'm going back to my aunt's tomorrow. Oh. <clears throat> so this is, uh... What, this is a sort of goodbye, then, is it? The first time I saw you, I thought... <laughs> what, what do you think? I thought, he's all right. Did you really? <laughs> Goodness me. Goodness me, you never said anything, did you? Goodness me, if only I'd known. <laughs> yes. On the other hand, you do want to change your name, don't you? What? You know, Clanger. I'm, I'm sorry, you haven't, you, haven't, you haven't told me what your first name is. Clarabel. <laughs> Clarabel Clanger. There we are, QED. <laughs> Anyone with a faintly normal name must be like a catnip to a ginger tom. <laughs> what are you saying? No, nothing, nothing, no, no. Just being, you know, pragmatic. <laughs> Heavens, I am enjoying this conversation. <laughs> We're very candid, aren't we? <laughs> I don't like this tea. It's got bits in it. Oh, dear. Oh, the bag's worn through. <laughs> they do in the end, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. We could have had quite something going for us, couldn't we? If we I mean, you know, I, you know. We probably could have gone to concerts and plays and things. Then afterwards, I would have driven you home. Perhaps on the third occasion, we might have kissed. And <laughs> then I'd have sent you roses, possibly. And then, well, I probably booked a lot more tickets. And at least we saved ourselves some money. <laughs> Do you always talk like this? Sorry, like what? Everything might have been, but wasn't. Oh, oh, wasn't might have been with Jezebel Hinks. <laughs> By Jove, I had my share of the action there. Well, that's comforting to know. <laughs> I'd be all over you if it wasn't for this lawnmower. Not the wretched lawnmower. It's all right, then. There's no problem. There's no problem. Oh. Oh. Look, look, we've done it. We've done it. We've done it. We've done, done it. it. How do you do it? <laughs> what have you done? We have found it, Mother. Well, I suppose you were bound to sooner or later. <laughs> Not that, Mother. The secret drawer. I'm Timothy's mummy. You must be Miss Clapper. Clanger. Never mind. Now, where has he put the key? I do hope he hasn't been all unnecessary. Come and have a proper cup of tea. Thank you. Uh, Tim, are you... I'll come along in a minute, Clara. Yes, just you carry on. Now, hidden where anyone can hear it. Now, where has he put it? Timothy! Bells! The bells! 
two in the morning. Well, I didn't ask them to start again. Well, they had to. Seventeen complaints from the neighbours. Your name will be mud in every belfry in Oxfordshire. Some poor old thing thought it was the invasion. <laughs> well, it was the bells that gave me the hint. What hint? Well, hidden where anyone can hear it, you see. You know, the key. Key rings. What key rings? No, not key rings. The key. You know, ring. It's obviously hidden in the vase Uncle Bastable gave Mother. That's the only place it can be, you see. The key. Rings. Ding, ding. <laughs> Sydney? <laughs> you wicked old thing. <laughs> it isn't even the first Saturday in the month. <laughs> I've got hairpins in. Oh well, if you must. <laughs> <coughs> Mother, it's me. What? <laughs> what are you doing in here? You've not wet the bed. <laughs> no, Mother, because I haven't. What are you doing with my vase? You're not doing it in there. <laughs> I'm not doing anything in anything, Mother. The key to the secret drawer. Be quiet, you'll wake the neighbours. Uncle a Bastable means us to break this open. Give me that. I'm not having you coming in here breaking things. In that case, you'll leave me no choice whatsoever. What are you doing? Well, I can't break it in here, Mother. I'm going to break it on the drive. <laughs> that was memorabilia. All that is left of Uncle Bastable, barring his ashes. You've broken everything in this house. It was you who broke the Badgerigar's mirror. <laughs> Seven years bad luck that bird had. <laughs> it should have been you. Fetch me my hairbrush. I'm going to get the key, Mother. Fetch! Mother, I am not a dog. I wish you were. <laughs> I asked your father for a puppy and all I got was you. <laughs> Who's throwing things about? This hit me on the back of the neck. <laughs> what are you doing in the garden at this time of night? Oh, uh, watering the odd uh, spider. <laughs> Find the odd spider in the back garden, Father. That settles it. Line up. Well, Timothy I, first. I've done nothing. No, that's very true. Timothy, put your hand out. <laughs> Things unbreakable. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Allboys. Thank you very much. Well, our little impromptu concert um, on behalf of the deaf uh, <laughs> continues with a song I have asked Miss Allboys to sing myself. It was a particular favourite of my dear Uncle Bastables, and it is in fact a traditional air beautifully arranged by Ronald Hazelhurst to the tune The Ascent of the Lark. Thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry. A little, little programme note before, if I may. <laughs> Legend has it that the Skylark, when it is about to die, takes to the wing and singing ever higher and higher, it flies up and up in ever decreasing circles until finally it disappears. Language, <laughs> Timothy. Sorry, Father. Miss Allboys. The Ascent of the Lark. <laughs> No, don't worry. Carry on, carry on, carry on. It's all right.
A glass engagement ring. Well, it cost 30 bob. <laughs> I got it from that chap in the pub. All these years deceived. Well, you can take it back. And the other one. Oh, would you mind singing this song again, Miss Olsen? It's only a ring. We're all said and done. Oh, please stop me from hitting him with something. No, don't, don't. Let her hit him. Hit him. What's it got to do with you in front of all these people? Why should I hit him? Well, hit something. Oh. Oh. Here's a key. Oh, Miss Clanger, I love you. Very impressive to me the way you worked this one out. <laughs> I'm sorry Mother's not talking to you, Father, by the way. Oh, blessed relief. <laughs> Here we are. It's coming. There we are. Ah. Oh, look. Bottle of bells. Oh, nice one, Bastable. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. My dear Timothy, well done. <laughs> I knew you'd work out my little riddle. Why all the secrecy? Take a look at the diary and you'll soon understand. Diaries? That's a bit news of the world. <laughs> Goodness me, look. Names. Names of people. Title people. There's a duchess there. Marks out of ten. <laughs> he wasn't such an archdeacon after all, was he? Oh, sly old puss. <laughs> Bit of a Casanova. Oh, oh, don't tell your mother. No, goodness me. What else does he say? You're a librarian, Timothy. Keep my diary safe. And I'm sure you'll know a good place for my ashes. Last thing. We have each of us only got a short time in this veil of tears. So whenever you see a pair of sparkling eyes and they're sparkling in your direction, raise your hat, introduce yourself, and press on with full sail, and never waste time regretting what might have been. Yours, etc., Uncle B. By gum, I'll do it. It's me, he means. <laughs> Clarabelle, I've let her slip. Oh, never mind. There'll be another one along again soon. <laughs> what are you doing here? I collect train numbers. <laughs> you didn't have to see the number on that one, did you? No, I didn't. Oh, doesn't matter. I've got them all anyway. <laughs> Your eyes do sparkle, don't they? <laughs> Sorry, hello. I'm Timothy Lumsden. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> oh, well, I might as well press on full sail. Why don't you and I have a nice walk down um, Mill Road? Mill Road? Yeah. Love is lame. <laughs> yes, I think Uncle Bastable would be most at home there. <laughs> <laughs>